I wasn't expecting to have to do this um, this early in the season, but we're making bugger all power, man. It's still summer here, um, but one of those arrays over there, uh, it should have three kilowatts on it, but it's only got 1500 watts at the moment. Um, I had a rub through, some cables go up through the roof over there, I had a rub through and it shorted out on one of the one of the roof panels. Um, so I put some conduit around it to try and protect it, but I need to hook that back up. Um, because yeah, I mean, the battery's gonna be charged. It's only midday at the moment. Um, we're hitting it with 11 kilowatts, 12 kilowatts. Woohoo! happy days. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I've got 1500 watts left on the table. Eight hours of that, you know, that's another 12 potential kilowatts we could get in. So uh, I'm about to do something about it. Um, so I'm gonna go grab my little patch lead that I've made up for it. Well, actually, I didn't make up for it. Stopped in an alt tech and bought. Uh, and uh, see if I can get that extra 1500 watts on. Oh, what we should do is look at the low light performance versus uh, the high light performance because, uh, you know, that's what it, that's why I was logging the data before. So let's go and have a squeeze of that first. Anyone that's ever pulled cables would be familiar with one of these things. It is a fucking godsend, I'll tell you what. So, push this down through the solar panel. So I'll get up there. I'll push this down through the solar panel so it's following the path that I want. And then I'll tie on my little patch loop, which is just over here. I'll tape that on and uh, send it through the other side so I don't have to lift any of these panels up. And try not to fall off the roof in the meanwhile. Well, not they're off the roof, but definitely off this. Uh, what have I got there? Pointy end stays. Okay. Let's get into it. This is not going as smoothly as I'd like it to. I have to whip the ladder around the other side there and try and drag that cable down. What a fucking pain in the ass. I really need like a piece of that nylon strip they used to join wood together. That'd make things a whole lot easier. All right, through to the other side. Uh, that was a fucking nightmare, to be honest with you. Now, one of those leads up there, this is where I had the rub through, I think. Pretty obvious why. Um, so I've got, you can actually see where it arced. So yeah, the piece of conduit that I had over there before fell off and uh, ended up with a fucking rub through. Not ideal. So I'm gonna plug that in, I'm gonna find the cable, the, at least the old one that used to be there. Plug it in and we should be good to go. The sun's out too. Yeah, so I can't actually get the original cables back down because they're jammed under the roof somewhere. And I don't feel like tugging on them because if I tug on them, I'll have an exposed terminal and then that could, you know, electrify the shed. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go back inside and I'm gonna make a new cable and pass a new cable down to the switchboard. I'll put it into its own fuse and that'll connect the other string of solar panels temporarily. So I need the little prong type MC4. Got him, and some conduit, because I don't want another fucking short. I swept this bloody mess up, finally. Um, so where are we? That one's not plugged into anything. Ah, it's that one there. So I need to get from there down to there, which is going to be a pain in the rectum. Ah, I'll get the cable snake out. All right, so we're in the peak of the day. Um, production's pretty good. And I can see, let me turn that light back on. I can see the end of my cable snake there, right? The thing is, um, I usually use a TIG welding rod to pull those things through. Uh, that's probably, let's face it, probably asking for trouble. If I go stuffing a fucking TIG welding rod through there and I get too close to that terminal, uh, I might, you know, I might turn into a fucking piece of charcoal. So let's not do that. Um, I'll wait until the sun goes down and I'll finish this off then. Because uh, there's not much to go. Um, I can either get on the roof and disconnect the fucking panels at the roof, or I could just wait until the sun goes down. I'll probe these and make sure there's no power coming through, and then we'll go from there. So, yeah, that sounds a little bit safer, eh? In the meanwhile, um, I haven't shown this yet. I'll probably pop up a uh, probably pop up a short for this. Um, I've used these these BMSs, right? Uh, because the inverter BMSs weren't available at the time. And 
frankly, I haven't really been interested in um, in changing. Right, like there's not there's how much value is there in it? Not a lot. This is a, allegedly will integrate with the Victron gear. Uh, yeah, like I've seen Off Grid Garage talk about it. Not sure, you know. Uh, he's he said that there's some issues, but I mean, like no more than what we're already having, right? Um, prior to that, I was working on something similar to the Peterboard, but one that would let me sort of network these all together, right? So we we build a CAN bus, and then they round robin message. Like round robin is a um, high availability term where like each device takes it in turns producing the Victron messages because I didn't want a single point of failure, right? right? I understand that this is a single point of failure, but that's fairly reliable. I add in an ESP32, and an ESP32 is a seven dollar device from China, it might break. So what I was hoping to do was put one per shelf and have them speak to each other over CAN with some additional CAN bus messages and then if one of them is down the others will notice and then they'll take then they'll just notify hey that that shelf is down and they'll continue to produce the messages that'll stop this thing from shutting off not getting its safety messages that's no longer required if i just use this so i bought this one second hand um i'll test it on that battery down there and that frees that battery up for oh it's a good opportunity um this will go onto that battery and I'll test it with this MultiPlus 2, so I'll pop that MultiPlus 2 on the wall um, and, and we'll see how the integration goes, but I've got another battery that I'm working on that's for my e-scooter. So yeah, I'll come back to this uh, later on tonight and I'll follow up with another video once I've got that extra uh, once I've got that extra string on. I also found two more of my uh, like um, MC4 double adapters, so I'm going to add some more panels onto that shitty array that I've got. Um, Oh man, really, I should just fucking install them on the other side of the house, shouldn't I? That's probably a better idea, eh? Why am I messing around? I don't want more panels sitting across my backyard like I used to have. So, uh, it's the next day, and, um, there is no good news. So, uh, we ran in that extra cable, um, and hope in the hopes that we could bring on another 1500 watts worth of production before winter but she no good so if i probe the other one let's have a look 100 should be 167 163 so we got a bad panel up there i think fuck's sake yeah so the thing is if there's a bad panel i can do one of two things I can identify the bad panel if it's only one, remove it from the string, then remove one panel from the string below it as well, and we'll be down at two and a half kilowatts, which is still better than the 1200 watts we're seeing. But um, the alternative is I actually take that entire string out and I replace it with the other second hand panels I've got and go from there. Um, or, fuck man, Alt Tech had shit loads of um, these big, they look like they've come off a power station somewhere, they look like almost 600 watters. I just don't have the money for it right now. Beginning of the year is the worst time for us, so... Uh, yeah. It sucks. The outcome is that this ain't going to work, but... Fuck. Pisses me off. We don't need it during summer, so it's not the end of the world, and we're not going to need it until sort of the fifth or sixth month this year. Um, the other thing I could do is I've got additional inverters, right? This one currently doesn't have any, doesn't have any input on it, so I could use this one. I could, like, da shrink down the second string that's currently attached to that, and put it on this one. I mean, the thing is that none of these are actually touching even close to their capacity, right? They're all at one third, just under one third of their capacity, which is good because I'm, I should really only run three of these. If they're at full capacity, I can only run three of these with my 10,000 VA inverter, the Victron inverter. But, you know, it's like, it's nice to have diversity and it's nice that the MPPTs can, can focus on the direction that the sun is at that specific time, which is why I did it anyway. So, yeah, I guess I'll have to leave it at that. Um, I've been working on swapping over the little battery down the bottom there. So I've got the JK BMS here that used to be down there. I've put in one of those inverter BMSs. This one's second hand, so I'm not entirely certain it's going to work with our, um, you know, with our inverter. But it's charging. Happy days. I didn't even know it had a charging indicator. That's cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try integrating that with this MultiPlus 2. Uh, and then this is going to get installed in the battery pack for my e-scooter. So hopefully I'll get those videos up shortly. 
Um, appreciate you guys who watched to the end. I appreciate the people who comment. Um, thanks very much. We've been we've we've hit the thousand subscriber mark, which is awesome because uh, it means that if we can get our viewed hours up, they'll let us monetize the channel, and then we can you know potentially get more equipment in and make more videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.